Welcome back to the Transfer Talk podcast. My name is Cora Brown and I am a Transfer Jack Peer mentor. Joining me today is also another fellow Transfer Jack Peer mentor, Lily. Hi, I'm Lily. <laughs> Hi, Lily. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. Of um, first things first, I want to ask you, so why did you want to become a Transfer Jack Peer mentor? You know, it was really simple, Cora. <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, I had a mentor when I came here. I'm from out of state. I'm from California, actually. And coming out here, um, I knew no one. I've been to Arizona once in my life before, and it was for like maybe a week max. So I know absolutely nothing about the state, nobody here, no one in my major. Um, so my mentor was really helpful. She was my letter of rec for this job, actually. And I think she was really good at helping me kind of like get acclimated. Um, and that's how I joined a lot of the clubs I'm in now and how and why I'm so like involved in NAU. So. Wow, that is so awesome. Um, yeah. I also being an out of state student, um, was not really a transfer student. I wouldn't, I wasn't counted as a transfer student. I did do enrollment and coming to Arizona was the, like the first time I came to Arizona was the first time I was moving into the dorms. And I get the feeling of like not having a lot of people. And it was really good to hear that you had your transfer Jack peer mentor there for you. Um, I was supposed to get a peer mentor, but I did not or got any contact from them. So oh, no, I'm sorry. It's okay. I, I learned, figured it out on my own, but sometimes I kind of like wish I had that no, experience definitely. to get more involved because now I'm too timid to do it. <laughs> Valid. So, yeah. Uh, so what is your feelings on being a transfer student? You know, when I was in high school, it was literally like the worst thing in my head because I was like, oh my God, I'd rather not go to community college because you know, like just all the stigma around it. Um, but I'm going to be honest, I'm really glad I did because not only am I like $30,000 less, less in depth than half my, my, my coworkers or like not even coworkers, but like my classmates. Um, it's also just, I feel like I had a chance to mature a lot, like in an easier way. And I didn't kind of get thrown in to life. I mean, I still did, but in like a different way. Um, but I had the ability to kind of explore life and explore all my options before deciding college and deciding like it for sure was my choice before I realized, Oh, this isn't for me and dropping out and spending thousands of dollars. I think that's a, like a really good way to do that. Um, especially like just with me coming out of straight of high school and going straight into college, there's a part of me that kind of like had those doubts of, Oh, should I even be going to college? Should I be just joining the workforce? But having you to like test it out and kind of like decide is this something I want to do or continue or do something different? That's, that's really nice. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that as much as it kind of sucks because I feel like I'm kind of behind compared to a lot of like my peers here and also just my friends back home. Uh, just because of my community college time, because I was one of the few ones out of all my friends that didn't go directly into college. Um, I feel a little behind, I'll be honest, but I feel like it was worth that in the end, though, because if I wasn't behind, I wouldn't have made my decision to come here. I probably would have ended up in California somewhere, not even liking it. So could be worse. Yeah, it could be worse. <laughs> could be worse. <laughs> could be worse. Okay. So tell us your experience. What was it like at your previous community college? I'm going to be honest. It was all online. Uh, pre-COVID too. It was over like in the Midwest. <laughs> it was free. Uh, my dad's union paid for it. So it was free. I was the youngest person in every single class. I only knew that because we did discussion boards and people were like, yes, here's my grandkids. Here's my kids. And I was like, here's my cat when I was like 18. Um, but it was really enjoyable so far. And then I took some at my local community college. Um, both were in line too, cause it was just like COVID essentially. Um, so I never really had a college experience. It was just kind of me asynchronous, like doing homework and uh, yeah, doing homework and somehow passing. I bet that also like took a mental toll on you. Like yeah, especially because I was working full time too while I was doing those asynchronous classes. It just felt like all I would do is work, 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 and then maybe see my boyfriend at the time. And that's about it. <laughs> well, I... I... You know, the only time I did like online school was my freshman year of college and my senior year of high school. And 
I know that took a very mental toll on me and I wasn't working a job. I was just staying at home with my parents. My parents were driving me nuts, but I feel like everyone's parents were driving them nuts. Yeah. That was a weird time just for everyone. I think so. Yeah, definitely on that one. So if you can go back and change anything about your transition, uh, is there anything you would change? Yes. And it's one minor detail and it's no one's fault, but my own, I think. I should have gone to transfer orientation. I did not. That year, it was kind of weird because of COVID. Um, It was 2021. So, like, there wasn't really any orientation, essentially. Uh, I think there was, like, online, but I don't remember hearing anything about it. And then I remember coming here and getting this job and hearing about it. And I was like, there's an orientation? (laughs) I feel like that would have saved me a lot uh, because I kind of ended up just, you know, playing around and figuring out random stuff. But my mentor was really helpful. But. A lot of it was kind of, you know, you got to figure it out. So. I wish that I knew, like, a lot of stuff going on on campus. Like, I didn't know a lot of things until I got this job. Yeah, um, I agree. <laughs> didn't know any of the events or the different type of, like, resources out there. I felt like it wasn't really uh, talked much, especially with, like, professors. Like, even in my own degree course plan, like, with being a business economics student, They didn't talk about the business professional program, how to figure that out on on my own. See, that's why I love my major with social work is because I knew most of those existed already um, because I had to write papers about community resources or NAU resources. So I already kind of knew about them. Uh, So this job was just more of like a a practicing realm for me and my my knowledge, I guess. And I always like learning something new. So it was always nice to know that people do care about this. Yeah, that's that's still awesome. <laughs> and also to like understand and share that experience is mm-hmm. very important, especially with your current mentees. Yes, I love all of them. They're all so sweet. They're so adorable. Yeah. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you wish that people understood about the transfer experience? I wish people would understand that it's no one it doesn't make someone's education less because of where they've where they've been before. I mean, yeah, it's not like going to Harvard for four years, whatever, but it's nothing less. It's an, you're still going to school. It's college is college, you know? It's still that degree at the end of the day. And um, no matter where you receive your degree from, as long as it's accredited, of course, but, you know, <laughs> but it doesn't matter where you get your degree from. Um, some people have no other choice and some people that's their choice and people should respect that. Another thing I want to add on is uh, it doesn't matter about how long it took you to get it to. No, you completing it is a big thing within itself, no matter how long it takes you. Yeah. That shows a lot of drive and a lot of passion, especially if you're working full time and in school. I'm not going to expect someone to do that in four years. Like, Or if you have children. No, well, absolutely not. Yeah, I completely agree. And uh, speaking on my own personal experience, my older brother, it took him five years to get his associates. And then he did another three years to get his bachelor's and had only like one semester left for classes and then stopped. And he felt ashamed that it took him that long to get his degree. And my family and I had to like really show his eyes like no one like no one cares no one cares how long it took if you finish it you finishing it is enough you got something no finishing it says a lot or even just working towards it says a lot absolutely and not giving up college is hard it's not (laughs) that is very true it's not easy so how is being a mentor to your transfer students expect uh, affect your experience as a transfer student that's an interesting question going to be honest I feel that it's opened my eyes to other people's stories and experiences uh just because I only know my experience um I feel like I've learned a lot about the state of Arizona very very quickly I learned a lot uh I I still don't know anything about it but I know more so now when people are like oh yeah I'm from here I'm like okay now I kind of know where that is (laughs) instead of being like oh yeah I don't know where that is but um it's nice to hear other people's perspectives kind of learn where they're coming from, different cultures, different backgrounds, any sort. So, yeah. My favorite thing was learning about from Arizona. I was like, oh, yeah, my hometown is the Valley. And I was like, 
the valley i said that that to my family back in california and they're like you mean silicon valley and i was like no no phoenix see and in my family we think of like sun valley which is outside of reno (laughs) so (laughs) i think everyone has like different terms different terms for the valley i know i have to like clarify that when i call my family no i know it's just the like the little things it's so funny so funny (laughs) so when are you planning on graduating uh spring 2024 are you excited yeah, I mean, I'll have my BSW, so I feel like that's a an excitement in itself to go be a social worker one day. Yeah, that's so amazing, and especially <laughs> with um, you know with our current job, it gives you experience. Oh no, um, definitely. I feel like this is a like a much ca- more casual way into social work, um, but I really enjoy it though, mm-hmm. and it, it it's kind of solidified why I did social work, like doing this kind of stuff plus everything else I do I was kind of like yeah I'm in the right place I think I am yeah Uh, for me I just wanted to um get a better understanding of like how to talk to people and kind of like help manage people a little bit no and that will be helpful for what you want to do also Mm -hmm. so so what do you like about campus I like that there's like seasons here but I do not like snow I'm tired of the snow I'm sorry to everyone listening that loves snow but I'm over it. But I'm like I like it because it's not deathly hot. And I also like it because like the fall is gorgeous here. It's like orange and yellow, super pretty. Um and then there's always like kind of something going on. Like it's somewhere or another, like even if you don't know there is something going on. Which always trips me out for some reason because I'm like, oh it's so quiet. But somewhere is some <laughs> something something's going on. Whether it's downtown or on campus or your friend's house. So it's been really sunny today and I get like a nice cold breeze on me and I'm like, Ooh. oh, it finally feels warm and not like <laughs> it's gonna snow freezing. next week. No. No more snow. I'm over it. Sorry, President Cruz Rivera. Please stop the snow. Please, please, sir, please. Please, sir, stop the snow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what was your favorite transfer event that you've been to or worked? You know, I didn't go to any when I was uh, a mentee because I I know, funny, I work here now um, because I was like so closed off that I legitimately only had one friend my entire first semester here. And then I joined the honor society. I mean, um, shout out to Blue Key. Uh, and <laughs> then that, that, that's when like I finally like went out and did stuff, but I didn't go to anything. I don't think I did. I really liked our college night for SBS. Um, even though it wasn't huge, it was really sweet to meet a bunch of other people that were in like the same discipline or like the same area of discipline that I'm in. Mm-hmm. I mean, social work is a lot different than like Parks and Rec and all the other ones in SBS, but it was nice to meet other people that are interested in something similar, mm-hmm. essentially. Having that common interest. Yeah, definitely. So what has been your favorite memory been at NEU so far? At NEU? That's hard. Because there's a lot of little things that are, like, really cool. But then there's, like, there's nothing that's big that, like, stands out. You know what I mean? It's just a lot of, like, little things. Oh, I think it was, actually, it was me getting on the dean's list my first semester here. Oh. I think that was, that was a big one. And that, and then getting into my major. Um, I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but you have to apply to the social work major. You have to have references. You have to write, like, essay questions um, on why. So getting that, oh, I also got an interview with DCS. I didn't get the job with them, but that was still crazy, though, to go sit with, like, someone that literally works for the government at the age of 20. Yeah. Well, since you are graduating, do you have any plans after graduation? I still have another year, which is good. Thank God. Um, But I think I'm going to go for the advanced standing master's in social work. So that'll be, like, a year and a year and a half. Um, and then I'll be able to work for the government. Want to do state or local? Um, I'm thinking of doing a nationwide thing, more like the Veterans Affairs um, or Veterans Administration kind of thing uh, to work with vets. Mm-hmm. Or I want to stay with Flagstaff Shelter Services. So I'm not sure yet. Kind of wherever I get put. So. Why, how, why has that piqued your interest? Uh, like the whole Veterans Affairs? Mm-hmm. Uh, so my brother's in the military. My grandfather was... Um, a lot of my buddies are my ex-boyfriend. A lot of people I know, yeah. A lot of people I know are in the military, and I feel like, I don't know, like, I just see how much 
they get put through. And I see how much the government does not care or they do not care enough with all the rates of suicide and everything. Um, so I feel like that's a population that needs it the most. And with the homeless individuals and like those facing homelessness, those are mostly veterans, especially like a lot of the older men are Vietnam vets or Korea vets or there's some Iraq vets too. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough. It's, that's heartbreaking here. I mean, uh, my brother, uh, is Marie and he did a few tours and around. They don't get enough support. Yeah. They really don't. Yeah. He came back and had some issues and then had to call my mom and it was like, I need something to stop me. Like I need help. And that was a big enough jump for him to make that comment. Well, I'm glad that he asked for help though. Yeah. That's a big deal. But he's no longer going um, to like the doctors that are part of the military, he's actually going to a specialist outside. Okay, that's good, though. I'm glad he's getting the help that he deserves and needs. Yeah. Well, thank you, Lovely, for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate you taking your time and sharing your story with us and your thoughts and your ideas. Yeah, and of course. I just want to make a comment that I love working with you, and thank Same. you so much. <laughs> thank you, Cora. I appreciate it.